let's get started. So good morning, everyone. My name is Antoine Cabot. I'm a Cloud Computing man Lab Manager at uh, Become, and uh, Christophe Dion, which is, who is uh, Cloud Architect in my team. Okay. So uh, I hope you all have uh, had a great HP party last night. Hope you're not too tired today. Uh, so today we talk about Cloud Orchestration with Watcher. Uh, I will go, of course, in details about what is Watcher in these presentations. Uh, just to uh, let me know, uh, can you please raise your hands if you are an ops guy in your day-to-day -day uh, job? Okay, so Watcher is built to help uh, ops using OpenStack uh, as an everyday tool. So I hope you will be interested in, the, in that. So a short summary of my presentation. Uh, so a bit uh, word uh, about who we are, uh, the private cloud reality is in, and what is Watcher, how it works in details. I hope we, we will have time to do a short demo to you, and then a Q&A session. So what about who we are? So we are quite new, actually. We are a private research institute, uh, so it's a bit special to be here at the OpenStack Summit. Actually, it's our second summit. We were in Paris, and then we are here with, uh, with this presentation. So um, the, re the, the research institute become started in January 2013, so two years ago, and it's based in France. Maybe you know the uh, equivalent in Germany, which is called Fraunhofer. Uh, so this is the quite bit the same uh, as a front offer, but in France. So uh, our activities uh, are focused on innovation in network and sec security, hypermedia, <coughs> and e-health. So uh, what we do uh, is, as we are a private institute, is that we take uh, most of uh, academic uh, research uh, around us in France, then we try to bring it uh, to a, a, matur a certain maturity level and then bring back to the industry uh, with our partners. So one of our big, biggest partners is Orange, the French telco. And uh, it's very important for us to uh, bring things on the academic side and push it to the industry. The, time fr the, time fr the common time frame in, the, in, in Become is two to three years. So the products we are, we are build building now uh, are targeted to be in, in production or, or in, uh, on the market in, in three years. So my lab is focusing on cloud computing and for computing and beyond. So the idea is um, to uh, uh, think about uh, how to we can improve, improve cloud computing management in the coming years. And we are really committed to OpenStack. Uh, I think, personally, that open source is the best way to produce better code. So as a research, a research institute, it's very important to uh, deliver code which can be trusted by industrial partners. So it's, I think it's important to be open source. So OpenStack is a good way to do it. Actually, my team is composed of multiple uh, skills. Uh, we have engineers, developers, cloud architects, and also student PhD. So we are lucky enough to have PhD to deploy OpenStack. So that's pretty good. So a word about the private cloud context. So what, so what we see today. Uh, actually, I will tell you a little story. So we imagine you are a new uh, engineer which is hired by a brand new company, by company and say, the company says, OK, <coughs> We want to have a cloud infrastructure because we think it's better for us, it's better for efficiency, for productivity, and so on. So you just come into this company and you say, OK, they say, OK, here is the infrastructure, now make it a cloud ready thing. So, of course, you choose OpenStack because this is the best tool you can use, uh, which is ready on the, on the market. So you choose OpenStack. And then you have all the departments of the company in front of you, so the IT department, the marketing department, and all of them. And uh, you say, OK, now we have a private, private cloud, so you can use VM, you can use everything you need uh, uh, on demand with an unlimited resources, with unlimited resources, so please do it. And then they restart. And at the beginning, they will all use golden VMs, because this is what they used previously. Uh, so they want VMs that you will never stop, but never, never. So 
please, uh, they will tell you, okay, please be aware that we, this VM must never be moved or migrate or, or anything. And the IT department will also need containers because it's, be it's probably sometimes better for specific services. So they will ask you to have containers in your cloud. Marketing department will also use golden VMs. And sales department uh, needs VM only to do um, sales computation by the end of the month. So they will probably need them maybe one, one day during the month. So they will ask just if you more VMs so to do some computations and then stop it. And finally, the accounting department, which is a bit better than the other in terms of technology, we say, OK, we, have, we also have apps that are native cloud apps. So they, you can, they, they are really uh, built uh, the way they can scale horizontally and everything. So you have all these kind of, of uh, VMs into your cloud now, and it's, it's going uh, during all the time. You have more and more golden ephemeral VMs and so on. And so, uh, your private cloud is probably not enough, so you will have to connect to a uh, public cloud to get a private cloud, to, to get a, a hybrid cloud. So they will have to connect to Amazon Web Services, to Google Compute Engine, or to Rackspace Austin. So of course, all these VMs uh, can be CPU intensive, or memory intensive, or I/O intensive at some times because workloads are constantly changing, and the needs for from the IT departments or from, from marketing departments, it's, it always changes. So workloads will be fluctuating. So I think it will be okay if you have tens of if you have tens of VM or hundreds of VM if you scale up the, the admin team. But with thousands of VM, it's just become a nightmare, and you will pr be probably like this guy. OK, what about the optimization options we have today? <coughs> so we can rebalance the load uh, over. So there are three options, actually. So you can rebalance the load over the entire cluster. So you just take uh, two, for example, two VMs that are CPU intensive, and you move them to two different physical hosts. To have a to have better performance, you can also consolidate VMs or reduce number of physical hosts. The idea is probably to uh, better use your infrastructure, and you can also free up physical servers. And the best solution is complex because it's probably a combination of these three. So it's quite a hard problem to 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 solve, and Watcher is trying to do this. There are many use cases from the communities. There is a very good uh, article from uh, Adam Spears, uh, which is here, uh, that he posted two days ago uh, on his uh, blog uh, about what can we do uh, about cloud re rearrangement uh, when we run a public cloud, a private cloud. There is also um, uh, a blueprint which has been submitted by OVH, OVH.com, uh, about how we can uh, move specific flavors like Windows instances and so on, uh, all uh, uh, all at the same time on, a f on the same physical host. And there are also many things uh, about energy efficiency for compute hosts. So there are, say, they had already projects. Uh, so OpenStack it is one, and uh, Blazor, which has been abandoned since, uh, is already available in the on Stackforge. And one last thing I want to mention is a blog uh, article from the ICC lab in Zurich, Switzerland, where they uh, are really focusing on making OpenStack more energy efficient. <coughs> OK, so let's see what is Watcher exactly. So Watcher is an OpenStack module. So we will have all the required specs. Uh, it's very important for us because now it's a big tent, you know, so we have to to comply to requirements from the OpenStack Foundation. So it's specifically targeted for private cloud deployments. We don't do public cloud. It's available on Stackforge, so we are still waiting from the infra team uh, review uh, to be on Stackforge, but it will be available probably on Monday. It's easily deployable on any OpenStack cluster. So the idea is you have your OpenStack already deployed and you just 
add this module, Watcher, and it will do all the things you need. It has no impact on OpenStack core components. This is very important. We don't want to change, for example, filters or, um, or uh, uh, anything in the Nova scheduler. It uses Keystone authentication, so this is really important also. We don't need any identification system uh, so far. It provides a CLI and an API for third parties if you want to automate something from the, from the watcher. What are the benefits of watcher? First thing, it automates lifecycle management of cloud resources. So the, the idea is to um, analyze on the go the workloads of VM to detect if there are CPU intensive, <coughs> memory intensive, IO intensive and then move them on the go according to SLA rules. So what we do is we just take all the uh, customers' constraints and we will try to better uh, uh, organize the VMs according to what they do uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, basis. Of course, this can uh, also um, uh, be uh, an energy consumption uh, goal, so we can uh, we can say, okay, I want my cloud to reduce its its energy consumption. So uh, Watcher will be able to do it. You can also anticipate system overload and performance bottleneck because we, as we are uh, analyzing workload on the go, uh, we can anticipate system overload. You can also easily plan maintenance supervision, like I want to stop this cluster and move all the VMs from one to another uh, during a short period of time. And finally, you can reduce risk of human failure. One thing I should say is that with the uh, actual Nova implementation, you can do all these things. You can use aggregates, you can use cells, you can use regions, you can use uh, server groups. All these things can be done, but we think that it's too, mo it's too manual. So you have to change your aggregates all the time. You have to say, OK, this cell is, for example, the IO intensive cell. And this one is uh, more for CPU intensive and with flash storage and all these things. So you have to do it very manually. So the idea with Watcher, as a starting point, is to say, we can do it w uh, with an automation, uh, w with automation tool. <coughs> a word about uh, our technical assets. Where we are good at is uh, hello, hello. Um, the profiling of VM. So this is very important to be able to classify uh, a VM and to say, okay, this VM is, uh, is running like this, so we will probably schedule it on this host, and then the next time we will have to schedule the same uh, image, uh, we will probably do it on this other host because it's better for performance and so on. And we will also provide advanced algorithm to, um, uh, to provide dynamic orchestrations of multiple VMs. Actually, in Nova today, you can only schedule one VM at a time. If you want to migrate uh, some, some VMs, uh, you have to do it one by one. And then with Watcher, you can give it a goal, and then it will move all your VM at one time. OK, I will let Christophe continue on this presentation. Thank you, Antoine, for the first part of the presentation. I propose you now to go deeper into Watcher. Today in OpenStack, there's a great component that makes a virtual machine placement. It's the Nova scheduler. It works fine. It is used in many production data centers all over the world. It's, uh, well, the Nova scheduler. The Nova scheduler takes into account so many constraints uh, and it is done uh, with a pipeline of filters, which are the Nova filters, such as uh, affinity, anti-affinity, host reservation for specific uh, tenants, and many more. Now let's see how Nova scheduler makes uh, a simple plasma, an initial plasma with uh, affinity and anti-affinity. We have uh, four nodes, uh, eight virtual machines. Uh, virtual machine one and four have an affinity. There is another affinity uh, between virtual machine two, three, and five. Notice that six and eight must never be on the same compute node. 
and uh, there is no constraints on the VM7, the purple one. So Nova Scheduler provides us something like that, which is fine because it's what's the kind of thing we expect. Now let's make a maintenance on the host B and C with Nova Scheduler. So Nova Scheduler has to move some uh, virtual machine and put them on the remaining hosts. One thing that you can notice is that Nova Scheduler doesn't keep uh, the affinity and anti-affinity between the virtual machine because it does not save the constraints between the VMs. And that's detrimental to clients and to the system operations. Now let's do the same maintenance, uh, but with our module. Today, Watcher keeps the affinity between the virtual machines. One more word about Nova Scheduler. It makes uh, mostly static placement, but the system is alive. Virtual machines are changing all the time in terms of number, in terms of CPU, in terms of uh, memory, network, uh, and disk usage. Without change, changing the um, cloud configuration, there is a fragmentation, and the fragmentation causes the system performance issues. issues. It's like in your laptop. Oh, sorry. It's like in your laptop. Remember, you have uh, sometimes to make uh, disk defragmentation. It's the same thing in OpenStack. We have to shut and revive the virtual machine or just move them. Constraints. That's a keyword for ops. In one hand, we have the user constraints described with the service level agreement. And if we do not conform to the SLA, we'd get penalties. In the other hand, we have the cloud provider's constraints. They are the goals. Cloud provider wants the system to work fine, but they also want to, to optimize costs. They want to lower the power consumption. They want to minimize the number of nodes used, and many more. And we have also the hardware constraints, which are limited resources. And every day, ops have to find a, a good trade-off between the constraints and the goals. And we propose Watcher. And to achieve this challenge, Watcher uses complex event processing, time series database, machine learning, and optimization algorithm. Because we want to satisfy the trade-off, which is a complex task uh, because of the dynamicity of the system, we use an adaptation control loop method. Oh, too fast. We have the monitor that collects uh, the topology, the metrics, and the event from the system. Then the decision engine uh, makes complex uh, data analysis. And if changes are needed, then it provides a change request to the planner. The planner builds uh, a workflow of actions and provides it to the applier. And the applier triggers OpenStax uh, uh, modules uh, with a sequences of actions. And it's a loop because it's an iterative process. In the middle, we have the knowledge. It collects, it, it saves the relevant data and uh, share them amongst uh, all of the components. Maybe some of you have noticed is that it's a map key feedback loop. Now let's see each module. The monitor. I said that the monitor extract, collects data from the system, but there is a huge amount of metrics. It's not big data, but the amount is uh, big enough. And the question is how to get and collect real-time information from the system. For that, we use complex event processing because it can collect the data, it can analyze the events, it can make 
aggregation, it may can make also some correlation, filters the data, and may reorder them. And for the relevant data, we store them into a time series database. But we must pay attention to the veracity and to the quality of the data. Otherwise, the next module, the, the decision engine will provide wrong, uh, wrong results. And one thing also that the complex event processing can make is detects and uh, it can detect uh, some specific events uh, and make uh, some kind of uh, automatism to, um, to pilot uh, OpenStack. Today we collect information from cellometers and two other modules, PDU for consum uh, energy consumption and um, uh, kernel module for um, disk usage and this process by the complex event processing. The monitor can also learn from the past and for that we are using learning machine tools. It learns from watchers previous action, it learns from uh, the workload of the virtual machine and uh, with this knowledge it can compute new constraints, it can make some predictive metrics and that's very useful because we can prevent noisy neighbor issues, issues. we can detect heavy communication between virtual machines and many more. Let's see an example of how Watcher works uh, with the profiling, virtual machine profiling, because there is another kind of profiling which is uh, the system profiling. So, Watcher with VM profiling. Our um, machine learning tool learned that there is heavy communication between uh, uh, the VM6 and 7, that there is heavy workload, uh, CPU workload on VM1 to 5. And remember, we still have the affinity and anti-affinity constraints. Node B and C are back. And some virtual machines are moved. And it's what we expect because um, we keep all the constraints. The decision engine, that's the hard slide of the presentation. Optimizing a cloud configuration is a multi objective problem. Optimizing a cloud uh, configuration is an NPR problem. That means that there is no unique solution to optimize at the same time each objective. But we can find many, op um, we can find many uh, optimal solutions. And for that, we use uh, optimization algorithms because they can handle multi-objective. They are here to, to resolve NPR problem in a limited time. It can adapt to change dynamically. It can provide fast convergence to an optimal solution. And for that, we, are, we use numerous algorithms, which are exact algorithms, heuristics, and meta heuristics. So Watcher is here to, s to simplify the ops live. An admin wants to make an optimization request. So this engine, engine selects a strategy, and so a specific algorithm. It provides a solution, and if there are changes are needed, then the action planner builds the appropriate workshop of actions. This is an action plan that we can pr provide, get it back to the admin. And then the administrator, if he wants, can apply it through the applier. And the applier triggers uh, OpenStack modules. This can be done manually with the admin or automatically. So we saw the current strengths. We saw the adaptation control loop method, map key, and um, the different modules. The monitor with the complex events uh, processing, time series database, 
machine learning, with also the decision engine, the planners, the applier, and now let's go for a demo. Antoine? Okay, so we have time to do a bit demo now. So uh, you will be able to play this demo when we, if you clone the code from the Stackforge project next week. So I will go on this screen. Okay, that's good. Okay, I hope that everyone can see it. So, so we just sourced our creds. So the OpenStack, uh, so OpenStack is already um, up and running, of course, with uh, two compute nodes, and this is just to show you the um, uh, algorithm we have in the conf file. So we will uh, do a bit, this demo is very simple, but it's just to show you that uh, a server consolidation can be done automatically. So we just show you that uh, all the services uh, are running. So here it is. So we have an API, a decision engine, which we talked uh, earlier, and the applier, which is, which is responsible for applying actions to all the OpenStack modules. So everything is running. That's good. Okay, so. Okay, so we will just check uh, how many servers we have. And the machine is. Yeah. Okay. So we'll. Uh, Actually, we have uh, f five VM uh, running in our cloud, so we we just uh, do a ping on uh, on everyone, just to check that everything is up and running. And then uh, during this demo, we will uh, start an audit, and then we will see that so some VMs will be moved from one host to another to consolidate uh, all the VM on only one host, and then put the hypervisor e state offline disabled uh, on the other machine. So here is um, CLI uh, from Watcher. So we will create uh, an audit template. OK, so we just say we call it my first audit, and then we set it to server consolidation strategy. So it will um, be created, and then so you can list it. You have all the. CLI commands that we are we used to uh, in OpenStack. So, and then we will create uh, an audit uh, based on this template, and we want to do it only one time. So we say it's just for one shot. Uh, you can also say uh, it it can be uh, periodic. So you can ask uh, Watcher to do it uh, every every hour or every two hours to run this audit and to try to find a better strategy. So now we will see that this audit uh, will be started, and we will get an action plan. So a list of actions. Oh, so it's recommended. So the audit. So here is the audit. So the result of the audit. So we have an action plan which says, OK, we should change the, uh, the hypervisor state. Then we should migrate one VM to another host, and again, and then change the power state of the hypervisor. So this is all the actions uh, we have to do. And then Watcher will automatically organize, uh, order them uh, the better way it should be. So here is a detail of one action. So we want to migra migrate from one host to another. So now let's see again the VM list. Here we are. So we have five VM. We have two hosts. So number five and number six. Okay and. 
Okay, so both uh, on both VM on both uh, hosts, uh, the hypervisor is enabled, so we can schedule VM whenever we want on these two hosts. So now let's go back to the action plan, and then we will start the action plan now. So we'll just get the UID, and then okay, and then Watcher will uh, try to. Uh, apply all these actions on the different modules we have on OpenStack, so Nova, Neutron, uh, and all these things. And so now you see that the state is changing. So the first one is done, the second one is done, and the third one is ongoing. So you have this feedback that all the actions are played uh, seamlessly and uh, you have a you have a state for each one, so of course, if any one of them uh, has an error, it will roll back all the action plan. <coughs> so now we have uh, executed this action plan. We will do the same thing as looking at where are located, where are the VM are located. So they are all on the host uh, six now. And if you check the hypervisor state, we will see that the host 5 has been deactivated. Here it is. And then just to show you that it's not fake, we just try to ping all the VMs uh, again. Uh, and now they are all on, this on the same host, which is number 6. That's fine. So as you can see, it's a really basic example. And this is really a starting point of what we want to do. And, and we now we, we want to get some feedback from the community to see uh, what we can do with this. If we can improve it, we need partners, of course. We need uh, contributions. So this really must be seen as a starting point for something we can do in OpenStack to improve. So I will go back to slides. Is. So you can see, uh, you can find the uh, wiki page on the OpenStack.org website, and uh, stack 4 ul will be available, pro I hope so, next, next week, uh, with all the code available. And we also, we of course, welcome uh, community feedbacks, so especially from Congress team, because uh, Congress is working on the SLA part, and we really want to be uh, in their discussions to include all the SLA, uh, uh, all the customers, all the um, cloud user uh, constraints we can uh, from Congress. Uh, and as you, may, uh, as you see, we also talked about energy efficiency. So we are really uh, open to discuss energy efficiency, especially with Huawei, which has talked yesterday, and other partners, if you are interested in this, maybe we can start something around a working group or anything like this around energy efficiency. So please uh, come back to us uh, if you want to discuss it, it is to, discuss is to discuss it further. Uh, and I think that's it for us. Uh, so if you have any question, please free to ask. Free time for everybody. No question? <laughs> I'm sorry? Yeah? Yeah, so uh, actually the template is, um, is just you create, it, it's just a w an object that we use uh, that you can reuse all the time. For example, when you say, okay, I want a template uh, for uh, server consolidation uh, you will all use it every time you want to do server consolidation. So I can show you all the things which are inside this object. Uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's just an object to be uh, easy to use every day uh, because you, you can use it uh, uh, many times. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to you want me to tell more about the machine learning algorithm? <laughs> So actually, we have experts in the team, so it, it's really uh, hard to talk about it uh, right now. So uh, we can discuss it further. Um, 
the idea behind machine learning is really to um, better profile um, uh, VMs. So the idea is to run a VM, then uh, uh, profile it, uh, and then um, uh, save it for uh, the next time you will, you will have to run it on your cloud. So the idea is to find, with machine learning, we can find where is the best place to run this VM on our cloud. So this is really the important part. Okay, so I think that's it. So thank you very much for your time. Enjoy the summit. <laughs>